In this video, I'll work through some sample problems involving logic circuits and Carnot maps. So the first problem gives us a Carnot map and asks us to find the simplest sum of products expression for the following map. So what we're looking for are ways to group these check marks together so that we have as large groups as possible that we can express with a simple sum of products expressions. As we saw in class, what we're looking for are pairs or we're looking for groups of four that are either in a one by four rectangle or a two by two square, or even a group of eight to express very simply. In this case, we don't see any big rectangles, but we can group these together into a couple of pairs. So here's a pair of check marks that we've grouped with a red circle. How do we express that, just those two check marks, as a sum of products expression? Well, when we look at those, we have one check mark representing x and one representing x prime, but both of those check marks have y prime and z prime. So the idea is that it doesn't matter what x is for those two check marks, but the y that appears has to be a y prime, and the z that appears has to be a z prime. So that would be represented by just y prime z prime. We also have these two check marks, and for these two check marks, the x that appears has to be x, the y that appears has to be y, but z appears as both z and z prime. So again, the idea is it doesn't matter what z is. So the green grouping is x, y. We leave out the z because, again, we're saying to ourselves, it doesn't matter what z is. z could be itself or z prime. And for the red grouping, we leave out the x because, again, the idea is it doesn't matter what x is. It could be either x or x prime. But the y has to be y prime, and the z has to be z prime. So those are our two products. And then the sum of products is we just add those products together. Once we have all the check marks in our map covered by some grouping, we just add all of the different sum of products expressions together, and we get our final answer. So let's start another one. There's sometimes different ways to group these together. So we're going to see that towards the end of this example, that there are different ways to solve this one. So here we have two groups of two and one group all by itself. XY corresponds to this grouping up here, where the X appears as X, Y appears as Y, but Z appears as both Z and Z prime. X prime Z prime corresponds to this grouping where the x is always a, appears as an x prime. The y appears both as y and y prime, so we leave that out, and then z appears as z prime. And then when we have a single check mark all by itself, well, then we have to include all the variables. We have to include x and y and z, and for that single check mark, we have x, y prime, and z. But there's other ways to do this. Instead of grouping that upper right check mark all by itself, we could group it with the check mark on the other side. Remember that these Carnot maps wrap around. So for that green grouping, x appears as x, y appears as both y and y prime, so we leave the y out, and z appears as z. The advantage of doing it this way, the advantage of having the groups as large as possible, is that remember what we're doing is we're trying to design a circuit that is equal to 1 for these arrangements of check marks and 0 otherwise. And the way that we would build that circuit is with gates, and gates, or gates, and not gates. And the simpler our sum of products expression, the fewer gates we need. So if we actually have a larger group, then that means that we need one fewer gate to make this circuit. We don't need more groups that cover check marks that we've already covered, though. So for example, if we thought, well, I can have another group here for those two check marks in the red dotted circle, that would be y, z prime. We don't need that at all because we already have all the check marks covered. So we already have our circuit with the functionality that we want without needing that extra term. So once you have all the check marks covered, you're done, but you want to try to cover them with as large of groups as you can. Another solution here is again using three groups of two and looks a little bit different, but just as correct as the other ones that we talked about. Now, sometimes we'll give you a sum of products expression, and you'll have to draw the Carnot map yourself and then try to figure out how to group the check marks together. So how do we do that? Well, we see here that we have four variables. We have x's, y's, z's, and w's, and so we're going to need a 4 by 4 square for that. We'll label the left-hand side of our square with x's and y's and the top of our square with z's and w's. So it's a good idea to start with x, y in the first row and z, w in the first column. Then as you go down those rows, change one variable at a time. So I decided to change x to x prime, but keep y the same. And then if I changed x prime back to x, I would get x, y, which I already had, so I don't want to do that. I want to change y to y prime to get something new, x prime, y prime. And then x prime, y prime becomes x, y prime. That's the one combination that I didn't have yet. And so I've got my columns labeled. 
it's perfectly correct to alternatively label these as xy, xy prime, x prime y prime, and then x prime y. That's just as correct. It's, it's not any better or worse. It's just a different way to label them. And then I can label my top of my square with z prime w, z prime w prime, and z w prime. Now we need to fill in our check marks. So we look at our first product expression. So y prime z w. What you should notice there is that there is no x, which means x could be either x or x prime, but the y that's there is y prime which means the y that appears has to be y prime. So if we look at our x's and y's, we're looking for where x could be either one and y has to be y prime. That's this row and this row. And then the z and the w have to be zw with no primes at all, which means we're in this column. And so that's where we put our check marks in those two spaces. If we're looking at the blue expression, we see x, but we don't see y, which means we're looking for the rows where x appears without a prime and y could be either one, that's this row and this row. And then the z and the w appear as zw prime, which means we're in this column. So that's where we put our two check marks. Finally, for the red expression, we've got x, y prime, z prime. So we have both an x and a y, and they appear as x, y prime, which means we're in this last row again. But then the z appears as z prime, and w doesn't appear at all. So we're looking for the two columns where we have z prime, and w could be either one. So that's how we decide where to put our check marks. Now we want to try to figure out how to group these together into as large groups as possible. So we have a group of four. So we have a group of a one by four rectangle. And in that rectangle, x appears as x and y appears as y prime. So that's x, y prime. And then we've got a couple extra check marks that we have to include. Again, we want to include them in groups that are as large as possible. The best we can do is two by one or one by two rectangles, depending on how you think of the dimensions. So the rectangle on the left, x appears as either x or x prime, y appears as y prime, and we have zw. So that's y prime zw, which notice, by the way, was in the original expression. That's okay. We couldn't simplify this one that much. And then we've also got x zw prime, which again was in the original expression. So the only real simplification we were able to do was to replace the x y prime z prime with an x y prime but sometimes that's as good as you can do. So there's our final answer, xy prime plus y prime zw plus x zw prime.